Hey guys, what's going on? It's your girl here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video, before I even get there on today's video, I just want to say I, I'm not doing this video for attention in any way. Please know that. I'm doing this because I want to raise awareness. I'm doing this because I want to help other people who's also in the same situation as what I am. I, I'm doing this to show people that it's, it's not normal, but it's okay. You've probably read the title, you've probably read the thumbnail, that's why you've clicked on this video. So if you are new to my channel, then welcome and I hope you enjoy. I, I don't even know where to start. I really don't know where to start this video. It's hard for me to make. Um, I've asked Dan's permission to make this video as well and he has said go for it. But I struggle with infertility and I want to just share my story. I want to share my experience so far or other people can look at this and say, you know what, she's going through it, I go through it. it it's not something that can be hid hidden away. It's something that I like to hide away. Don't get me wrong, I hide it away. If someone, you know, if someone says something to me, I put on a brave face and I just accept it. But it's something that definitely needs to be spoken about. I'm nervous, like I'm really nervous making this video. And I'm really, I really, really just don't know how to go about it. So I'm gonna take you back to the time of like 16 years of age when me and Dan got together. We've been together now for almost nine years this year. That's a hell of a long time. And we have not been trying, but we have been, we like, we haven't been careful, okay? Throughout all our relationship, we have never been careful. And from such an early age, we realized that something isn't going right. You know, something is off. We should have been pregnant by now. Something should have caught. So our suspicions were high when we were young, when we were like, you know, when we just got together, but we didn't bring it up. We didn't speak about it. It was just something that, okay, maybe it's not the right time. It wasn't until I hit the age of like 18, that's when we realized that actually it, it might be a problem. Uh, we didn't accept it. We didn't want to accept it. You know, you're not going to want to accept something like that. Definitely at a young age, we, we avoided it. We didn't go to the doctors. We avoided the whole situation. And it wasn't until I turned 21 when I was officially diagnosed with endometriosis that it become real. So when I turned 18 and it got too much, it just got way too much. I went to the doctors and I spoke to them and they put me on medication for my period to try and stop it. They told me to go on, you know, all, all this contraception stuff and I, I refused. I told them I don't want to go on it. You know, I, I, want, I, I don't agree with putting stuff into my body that shouldn't be there. So I, I I refuse to take any of that but when I was 21 I had an operation on my 20 I got diagnosed with endometriosis which is a basically a growth and a webbing of your endro, endro lining basically a lining of your uterus when you shred off a period sorry guys I do apologize this is kind of gruesome for you for you if you're not used to it but um, it's a shredding of your uterus when you have your period and instead of it shredding out of you it decides to go off and grow elsewhere and web up inside of your body which causes extreme pain which can cause a lot of problems basically you are internal bleeding like it is a hard friggin roller coaster to go through endometriosis and you like get if you feel like something is wrong and you feel like you're having pain inside which shouldn't be there during a period or even during the month, during sex, anything, go to the doctors and speak to them because honest to God, it is not normal. It is not normal to have chronic pains during a period, okay? Or during sex or anything. Go to the doctors and speak to them. And I had that operation and they told me that they found a little bit of endometriosis. They also told me I'm suffering with polycystic ovaries. So two of them combined together, they told me that I'm gonna struggle conceiving and I'm going to struggle having a child off my own naturally and I knew that anyway I, I as I said we've been non careful since the age of 16 I knew something was gonna go wrong but it was nice to have an official diagnosis to understand what can be causing the problem Dan has been tested he's perfectly fine and unfortunately it, it's down to me and it's a mental game you're constantly worrying you're constantly stressing you're constantly fearing the worst you're constantly feeling you know you're mentally exhausted about this problem it doesn't just drain you physically it drains you mentally 
back and forth the gynecologist we go guys I've had many of many of appointments with them they told me I could have another operation if I want but they don't want to do that because it can cause um, scarring on your uterus which can cause infertility as well so there's so much around it that can cause the infertility and the infertility is something that absolutely destroys you mentally yes it's something that you just have to get on with you have no choice but to get on with it and accept it but it is something that drains you mentally and physically like that's a female's purpose in in life is to produce and if you can't do it then you feel useless you try to do everything possible to help you conceive I've, I've tried so many different things I've just finished doing I've just finished off a tablet that the doctors prescribed to me my gynecologist described to me called Clomid for short um, and that one messed me up big time like mentally I literally I was exhausted from it I was mentally drained from it my hormones were so high everything just felt so confused it was horrible it was the worst experience of my life I was on them for six months but it was the it was it was that want and that desire to become a mother that made me get through them six months it didn't work they they didn't work for me and it, it really 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 upsets me because so many people have had good stories of Clomid. Before I even got prescribed them, I was looking forward to getting prescribed them just in case there was a chance of him working and unfortunately they didn't. And I've got a lump in my throat right now even speaking about it because I I was so excited to, you know, possibly they did work, possibly they was going to work. I was so excited for that, but they didn't. My next step is, I, I really don't know what my next step is, I have a consult, I have a appointment with my gynecologist next month um, to go over the next step, but I think he's either going to ask me to go in for another operation because of the pain is still there, um, and obviously just to make sure they haven't missed anything, but I think the next step is another tablet, and then he's going to offer me IVF, and if I have to adopt, I will adopt, I have no problem at all adopting, but that want to become a mum is a is is a crave it, it hurts you deep down i don't even know why i'm doing this video but i guess i just want to make people aware that it, it's it's something a lot of people struggle with they don't speak about it i don't speak about it if someone mentions that they're pregnant or they're trying for a baby or you know this kind of thing then i put on a brave face and say congratulations like i i don't i'm not one of these people to be jealous no way am i jealous i've had a friend who was scared to tell me that she was pregnant just in case how i reacted i'm not that person i will i will be there for you when you have your child i will love your child like an auntie i am not i'm, I'm not that person there are people like it who can have kids and who who hate other people who have kids but i i'm not me that's not me no one should be afraid to tell me anything when it comes to them having kids like well done congratulations like that's all i can say i'm not going to judge you i'm not going to hate you i'm not going to say oh you know you shouldn't have kids because i can't have kids like there's no there's none of that that's not me it's a struggle mentally physically exhausting everything but i i I guess what I'm trying to say is that if your friend struggles with infertility or your wife or your girlfriend or your aunt or your cousin or anyone, anyone that you know str struggles with infertility, just don't tell them that, oh, their time will come or don't tell them, oh, you know, it'll happen when it'll happen or the timing's got to be right and all this kind of stuff. Don't tell them that, guys, because that's not true. That's not true. There's people out there who has is, who is had kids at their lowest of life. It's all about how your body produces things. If your hormones are imbalanced, if anything inside your body is unbalanced, then you're not going to, you know, you're going to struggle and you just don't tell someone. It really triggers me when someone turns around and say, says to me like, oh, the timing's got to be right. No, no, no no the timing has not got to be right there's nothing to do with timing it's to do with how my body is responding to everything people think that it's it's easy people think oh you can't have kids you just accept it no you don't you don't not accept it you do not every month every single month and I'll, I'll do it now I, this today today this every single month yesterday today as soon as you start coming to your period, as soon as your period is due, as soon as you're one day late, or one day, an hour late, or you know, you've spent all day wondering where your period is and it comes in the night, every single day leading up to that period, you psychologically think that you're having symptoms of a pregnancy, you, you wanna go out and get a test, and then mother nature turns up and you repeat the cycle every month. You keep holding that hope every month. Every single month you hold that little bit of hope. 
you change little things, you do different things, you try different things in that hope that one day you'll work. It, it's hard. It's really hard. And I just want people to understand that if you're going through this, I'm here. I'll, an I'll answer any questions that you want. I will honestly answer any questions that you want. Infertility is definitely something that needs to be spoken about. Definitely something that needs to be brought up in school lessons. Like when I was in school, we had sex education, we had, you know, the puberty talk and stuff like that, but we never really spoke about things that could go wrong. We never, we never, we never got learned about like endometriosis and PCOS and stuff like that and infertility ever. I guess, yeah, they don't want to encourage like young pregnancy and stuff like that, but if you're if you're going through your period and you're at a young age or in them lessons and you're in pain or you're having problems you're having difficulties during your periods then it needs to be talked about it needs to go you need to go to the doctors you know it needs to be understood in another sense i've kind of welcomed infertility into my life yeah i don't want to accept it but I ain't moping around and you know making everyone feel sorry for me or feeling sorry for myself I'm not that person I'm gonna walk around and raise awareness for it I'm gonna walk around and tell people it's not you know I understand it's it's not normal it's really not normal but it needs to be accepted it needs to be accepted in a normal way because it, it's a struggle that happens it causes mental illness it causes everything guys it just happens. If you guys enjoy this video, I wanna start bringing you guys on the journey with me just so that I can look back on it. And I might even do it if you guys don't wanna see it because I wanna I wanna look back on this journey one day and be like, that is exactly every everything I went through was worth it in the end. Whether I finally get pregnant or whether I adopt or whether I end up foster caring, you know, even if I end up with a dog my whole life. I want to look back on this journey one day and think wow like I was strong I was brave and I was amazing to get through it back on and you know think Jesus girl you done it like I've known people not personally but I've heard of people who struggle with infertility and end their life because of it it's 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 a real problem that can mentally exhaust you not only that like Dan, he's been amazing through it all. One of my biggest fears when I found out that I could struggle getting pregnant was the fact that it might run him off. He's amazing with kids, okay? He's got younger siblings and he's amazing. I've always seen him with younger kids or my nieces and he's amazing. He is perfect to be a dad. It really, really, really kills me inside knowing that I, it, frust it frustrates me. It frustrates me knowing that I might never be able to make him a dad of his own and he accepts it. He he's there by my side. He's there on every single appointment I'm at. He's I I asked him if I could have permission to speak about this on my channel and he said, Yeah, go for it. People need to be aware of this. He is absolutely amazing. So is his family, so are my family. All our families understand what we go through. They're there for us. They 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 understand. They are there for every step of the way. My friends, my close friends are there for me. You know, it, it's something that people are there for you with. But unless they really understand it they fully just don't understand it i don't know i i hope you enjoy this little journey that i'm going to take you on and hopefully hopefully by the end of it we'll have a little baby out of it like that's my main goal i guess is to want well, get through this journey and show off a little mini me but even if i don't guys then one day once my life is sorted and once i'm settled down then we will think about adopting but for now it's hold our breath and fingers crossed and hope for the best I guess hopefully the next treatment will do us a little bit better than the last and hopefully we can start achieving some goals with my womb <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there i i'm a friend of my womb i try to be as nice to it as i possibly can even though it's a bitch to me i love every single one of you be yourself be beautiful even though you go even if you're going through struggles like myself just keep going just just keep going trust me in the end it's worth it guys i love every single one of you it's been your girl i'm out of here peace bye guys